Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Symphonium Audio Helios. And let's get started with the build cable and fit. So the build quality is really good. It's made out of aluminum. Uh, the cable is nice. It's soft to the touch. It doesn't seem rough or brittle or anything like that. And then the fit is probably the weakest point of this I am because the housing is pretty big and there's no proper place for the I am to rest. But other than that, it's not too bad. And the nozzle is slightly long and I have smaller ears but I didn't have any issues. So yeah, that's the ergonomic side of things. Now let's talk about the sound quality. So from the bass to the lower mid range, this does follow the Harman target. And then in the upper mid range and treble, there are some deviations. So this is a four balance armature set. I think two drivers for the bass, one for the mid range and one for the treble. So that's the driver configuration. Yeah, let's start off with the bass. So, surprisingly for a BA set, this IM is very punchy. It has a good punch to it. And it sounds very, very close to a dynamic driver. Um, if you told me this had a dynamic driver in it, I'd probably believe it. So, this is sub-bass focus. So... If you listen to a lot of drum kits and things like that that need a little bit more mid bass, this is going to sound a little on the leaner side. It won't sound that full. It's going to sound thin with those uh, types of songs. And then, But when you listen to genres like hip hop, rap that have sub bass that goes all the way low, this hits the lowest registers. It's very, very punchy, has good bounce to it. So when you listen to a dynamic driver, you're gonna notice it has slightly better decay. But this one, it's very punchy and then it goes away. So sometimes I do prefer balanced armature bass to dynamic driver bass. I know that sounds kind of weird, but for example, like the U12T, that's one of the best basses I've ever heard, other than probably the IERZ1R, which has the best bass that I've ever heard. So yeah, I do think BA bass is so good if it's properly implemented. And on this I am, the bass is properly implemented. So yeah, good punch. So if you listen to songs that have more mid bass, it might just not show up it might just sound completely flat so that's the base um am i missing anything i think that's that's how the base sounds so yeah really good i would say it's really good but compared to like the u12t it won't be as well textured um and as fluid as the u12t is but this does cost half the price, so exceptional. I have no complaints. Now let's talk about the mid-range. So the mid-range, it does have that slight scoop like the U12T. But the mid-range on this is a little more forward. Um, so voices, it, this is a very track-dependent IM because... If the master on some of these tracks, if they place the vocal pushed back, it's going to sound pushed back on these. And then on tracks that are more forward sounding, or maybe even a little too forward, this will sound exactly like that. So the voices will be the star of the show and up front. 
And sometimes I did have that issue with the U12T where the voices were a little too recessed when they should have been the star of the show. But with this, it's very resolving, close to what it was recorded in terms of the placement of the voices. And instruments in the mid-range sound pretty spot on, a piano, a flute, but I think a flute is in the treble region, so I'm gonna talk about that later. But yeah, any instrument you play through here, it has good crispness. It doesn't sound warm at all. Like, for example, the IERM9, the mid-range is warm, and it has some bass bleed. But the IRM9 does something that no IM I've ever heard does, so we'll get into that later. So yeah, instruments sound spot on. The voices aren't warm like they are on the IRM9. The Helios has a slightly drier characteristic to the voices. And I think this is more referency. Uh, so yeah, that's the mid range. Really good. The instrument separation, I would say, is close to top level that I've heard. Maybe just a hair worse from, like, the best of the best. Like, maybe the U12T, the IRM9. But it's really, really good. Just a hair below the best. So, yeah, that's the mid-range. On certain tracks, it could be a little shouty, but... That's because the track was recorded like that. It's not the actual IEM that's doing those things. And then on tracks that are recorded properly, the voices should be where they are. It's not dead center like it is on the IRM9, but it's pretty close. So yeah, that's the mid-range. Now the star of the show for this IEM is the treble. Um, it's absolutely insane how high the treble goes. It goes, it just extends all the way, like, to the limit of my hearing, I feel like. Um, just exceptional. It just reaches the highest, highest octave. And a lot of IMs, I never heard that reach that high of a level. So basically, any, like, sharp voices you hear, um... It's just going to extend all the way. So on tracks that have overblown treble, this will point out every single little flaw to the point where it's merciless. It does not hold back on poorly recorded tracks. So that is one thing to know. So it's very referencing the treble, but it's not harsh or fatiguing at all. It just goes... To the highest octave, like the limit of my hearing. And I, I don't think I ever said that, like the limit of my hearing. But somehow that's how this Helio sounds like. It's just very, very airy. So now let's talk about how the instruments sound. So if you listen to a violin, a flute. It just has so much treble. Like, I haven't heard an IM that has this much treble. I'm trying to think, but even like the U12T, in comparison with this IM, sounds like warm. In comparison to the IRM9, the IRM9 and the U12T just sound warm after you listen to this. Because the treble just, again... It just goes extremely high. Um, and the treble is extremely spectacular on these. On certain tracks that I've heard over and over and over again, this presented the song in a way that I've never ever heard before. Because the treble just has this bite to it. Like when you're listening to a violin or any type of airy instrument, this just steals the show. Um, it's very, very nuanced. And you hear those micro details in a really, really nice manner. So if you are, if you love treble and you want to hear treble that reaches the highest octave you could probably imagine, 
I guess this is the I am to go for. Just amazing trouble. I'm still in shock. Um, so yeah, any voices, it just has this nice airy sound. Like, you're in a freezer, and you got out of the freezer or something. <laughs> like, I, I, it's hard to explain it. I'm thinking, but it's just like, uh, you're at a con, like a live recording type of thing, or maybe yeah, like a live recording type of thing, and the room is just cold. And the instruments are cold, and when it plays, it's just very, very airy. If that makes any sense. But yeah, no, the treble is insane on this. I can't get over how good the treble is. So yeah, that's a treble. There were a few more other things I wanted to talk about. Okay, yeah, let's talk about the dynamics. So for a BA set, this has really, really good dynamics. Uh, for a BA set, uh, I think it's a little better than the IRM9 in terms of the dynamics. It's not quite up there with the U12T, but again, it costs about half the price, so that's fine. And then, so I do have a few small minor nitpicks, which I'm not the biggest fan of. So let's talk about the imaging and coherency. This is really important to me because when an instrument is playing in turn. So let's talk about the imaging first. So the IRM9, this IRM9 just blows every IM I've heard in terms of the imaging. It's laser focused. I know exactly where everything is placed. And I haven't heard an IM that has as good of an imaging because it's extremely coherent and in sync. Very, very focused. But on the Symphonium, I thought that the imaging was a little not that great compared to the IRM9. Because in terms of where everything is placed, it could get a little mushy. Or I can't, my brain can't comprehend where everything is placed and i think the imaging isn't the best because of the coherency maybe so yeah i did have that issue about where everything was placed it wasn't laser focused like it is on the irm9 and sometimes my brain had a hard time comprehending where everything was placed where the irm9 it's like perfect like Perfectly in sync. And then... So yeah, the only issue I have with this IM is the imaging and the coherency. It's not that coherent and the imaging's not that great because of that. Um, so yeah, other than that... So the soundstage on this IM... It sounds like a ball, like a ball, like a... In front of you, there's like a ball, like a egg-shaped ball maybe. Because it doesn't have that much left-right depth, but it has more height. So everything sounds like things are happening here and it goes like that. Where the IRM9, everything is spread out. Everything's happening everywhere, wherever it needs to be. So yeah, the IRM9 is a really, really special IM. It just absolutely amazing what they pulled off with this IRM9 because it's extremely coherent and it's just perfect in terms of the placement of the sounds but the IRM9 does have some issues also so that would be the ba bass bleeds into the mid-range and you do get a little bit of boxiness and then I'm not a fan of that warm tonality in the mid-range, but the coherency and the imaging is so spot on. I can live with some of those other flaws. And then on the Helios, it does have a few issues with the imaging and coherency. It's just not as sharp as the IRM9. 
And then in terms of the details, because of that slight coherency issue and where everything is placed isn't laser focused, I think the IRM9 is a smidge more detailed. So if I had to rate the detail levels on this Hel Helios, I'd give it around an A+, plus, but I'd give the IRM9 more than an A+. Plus. Hey, that's what I thought. So to sum things up, this has one of the most well-extended trebles I've ever heard. It goes to the limits of what my ears are capable of at least. And it's very, very resolving. It doesn't hold back uh, with the way the track was recorded. And you get really, really good micro details. Instruments just sound spot on. I think better than the IRM9 and maybe even the U12T because it just has that crunch and bite, like very, very airy, where you hear literally everything in the treble. So yeah, that's what I thought. Overall, I would recommend it, but you have a lot of experience and you've heard 50 different IEMs about, then you probably will notice the coherency issue and it doesn't have the best imaging because of that. So yeah, overall, I would recommend it. It's a really good IEM. It doesn't do that many things wrong other than those few things I mentioned. So yeah, it is worth it. And maybe look into it if the IRM9 or the U12T didn't work out. I'm not sure how that wouldn't work out because the U12T is still one of the best IMs. And the IRM9 does something that no other IM does. So yeah, overall, that's, those are my opinions on it. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. And take care. Like, comment, and subscribe.